Good morning. I'm doing something a little crazy because we're all going a little stir crazy, aren't we? I am in the park practicing social distancing for the most part. I there's nobody within Community, practicing very safe distancing following all local rules but I'm going to do something that I've been dreaming about ever since I first had it in Las Vegas at Morimoto's restaurant I'll be right back to show you what I'm gonna do Morimoto I've been watching him on Japanese Iron Chef since like 1999 or something like that he was one of the first Iron Chefs before Iron Chef came to America and I always adored his cooking. He has a restaurants around the world but one in particular and unfortunately the only one I've been able to go to is in Las Vegas and we had this tuna tartare extravaganza dish and it's absolutely delicious. I'm going to attempt to recreate something kind of similar to bring back I put the tuna in a piping bag and now I'm going to pipe this onto my plate. Sashimi, which is basically just raw fish, is, you have to be very careful, obviously. You always want a particular grade of tuna. If you just cannot find a, that sashimi grade of tuna, you can freeze your tuna because that will kill all the worms and microbes and all that. And I always say you have to trust wherever your meat and your fish come from. So I trusted this fishmonger to get this particular piece of tuna. The next is the accoutrement. We're going to do caviar, Japanese wasabi, sour cream, guacamole, or just avocado, nori paste, and I had to use sesame seeds. I I'm going to have to use sesame seeds, even though the original dish used little tiny pearl rice crackers. Little bitty, that about the size of, of a sesame seed. I wasn't able to find those. So first I'm going to put a row of caviar down. The most important thing with caviar is that you never use metal. So I'm doing a row of caviar. You should say where you got your caviar. I am using just the plain sturgeon black caviar. Then I'm going to do a row of wasabi. Yes, wasabi. It's not a huge roll, but it is a row. And this is straight from Japan. My daughter sent this to me. And then I'm going to do a row of avocado that I smashed up, add a little bit of garlic and a little bit of salt and pepper, which is basically guacamole. But to, for ease of piping, I put it in a bag. It's going to snip off the end. And I have the perfect way to do a nice row of my avocado. And then I did the same thing with my sour cream. I just put some regular full fat sour cream right in a piping bag. And I do the tip. 
and I have a perfect row of sour cream. This is an interesting concoction. I needed to find nori paste, and nori is seaweed. But I was unable to find nori paste locally in the, my one Asian market that I have. So I looked up online, and there is a way to take nori paste, and I experimented the nori, which is the sheets of seaweed. I added soy sauce, mirin, coconut sugar, and so soy, sauce. Soy, sauce, soy sauce, and water. And I cooked it on the stove, let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, cooked it on the stove, and then ground it to as much of a paste as I could. I wasn't able to get this nearly as wonderfully pasty as I wanted to. So it was an interesting experiment. And now I'm going to do a row of sesame seeds right on the end. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm making a mess on the heel. There we go. I'm going to flatten that down. I shouldn't have put the two greens next to each other. Mm -hmm. That's on you. <laughs> now I'm gonna try it. I need though toast points, so I brought my Breville and toasted up garlic bread. Basically, took my nice hearty bread, smeared it with just olive oil, garlic, and toasted it for about three minutes. Okay, here we go. The way to eat this, the way to eat this is you scoop up the toro or the tuna, scoop up the tuna. Bye.